Hi, today I'm going to be teaching a tutorial on projection mapping. Projection mapping is used when you need to texture a lot of things in a scene that have the same type of orientation, for example a city streetscape. And in this tutorial I'm just going to be texturing this building that you see here. Uh, the final product will look like this. Okay, let's get started. We're going to begin with opening the hypershader, which to open you go window, rendering editors, hypershade. This is the window for editing all your textures in the scene. And on the left hand side you'll see all the different types of textures that you can create. For the look I'm trying to achieve, I'm going to create a Lambert texture. Now whenever you create a texture, it's it comes up with a graph for the texture, as you can see in the work area. And you'll see it a lot clearer what I mean when I add the projection map. So to do that, you are going to get the attributes up for the texture, which if you don't have the attribute window up, like this, that's how your work screen may look like. You can double click on the texture and it will come up. And okay, once you're in this screen, you click the box. And now it's very important that you have as projection ticked here, otherwise, it's not a projection map and it's no point to the cheat. <laughs> um, See, so as default, you should have normal. So you create as projection and file. Now to load the file in, you go to this folder icon and I've set up my folder structure so I have all my s files in uh, source images and that way if I ever move anything around Maya is going to be able to find that easily. Okay, so I pick my texture it's for my diffuse map and now you can see my graph network. Okay, it's important that you actually lay everything out so that you can see every node otherwise you might get confused figuring out how things are linked so yep. um, if you ever happen to lose your graph network like if you just zoom out too far and then you can't get back to it you can right click the texture and go to graph network and it will automatically zoom extends it to your work area Okay, now once that's been added, let's actually put the texture on the building. So you can middle mouse click drag the texture on to the surface. Okay, now you can see that the texture is actually coming up really dodgy looking. Um, that's because the viewport is set as default to show textured images a very low res. Um, so to fix that, you can go to here, renderer, and set to high quality rendering. And because my texture is 1024 by 1024, I want to set my color texture resolution to 1024. And I'll set my bump texture resolution to 1024 because the same. And set. And now you can see the texture is actually coming up. And you can clearly tell how bricks are laid out and everything. Now that you have the building with the texture on it, you should have this node in the middle of your work area. Um, you can use this to adjust the texture, so this is just a place, it's a placement node for the texture, so you can adjust it, you can see it's changing on my screen. Okay, now another problem that you have with this is you can see the sides of the building are all stretched, that's because at the moment the projection is only on one plane you want to make it 3D so what you do is you select the projection in the hypershade work area and you want to make sure you're on the projection tab when you click it you might be on file 2 or place 3D texture 1 so make sure you click on the projection tab and you want to change the projection type from planar to triplanar and now you can see it's actually texturing as it should be on the sides as well 
and even underneath if you could see it. Ah, you can see through the windows. Okay, um, what we're going to do now is uh, add the bump map. That also needs to be a projection so that it all works correctly. So to do that, you want to double click here, come up with the attributes again, and you have a bump mapping option. You uh, press the box as projection file, just like before. And you're going to want to set out the graph for this as well. Because it can get quite messy when you have quite a lot of things. I suggest moving the bump to one side opposite the diffuse. Okay, now it's organized a bit better. You can see every single node. Uh, you want to set the file. It's just like before. Set Here's my bump map. Open that. And now you can actually see the bump map has loaded and you can see it in the viewport because we set earlier here to show the bump map by unticking low quality lighting. The bump you can actually see the bump map in the viewport. Now you can see that the bump map is stretched down the side and that's because we need to make it triplanar just like the diffuse projection map. So what we want to do is come and press on the projection node for the bump map side of the texture and set that to triplanar as well. And now you can see the bump maps actually projecting properly on all sides of the building back as well. Okay. This should be done now. Let's give it a run and see how it looks. Okay, from this render, you can see that the bump depth is obviously too deep, it doesn't look very much like bricks. So, the way we can fix this is by going into the work area in our Hypershade Editor window, and I want to go to the right hand side of my graph network for the texture, where I've put all my bump map stuff and click on the bump 3d1 node it will have that name, it could be 3d1, 3d2 depending on how many bump maps you have in the scene and you click on that node and we want to turn the bump depth down I'm thinking it looked really really deep so maybe 0.1 and we'll see how that looks now we'll render it again It's actually looking a bit better, but I think I've put it too low. So let's turn it up. 0.2, double it, and render again. I think that looks like the right depth that we're looking for. And yep, that's pretty much it. Thanks for listening to my tutorial. Hope everything works well for you. Cheers.